Right there guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be talking about Jude Bellingham to Real Madrid, James Milner to Brighton, Alexis McAllister coming the other way to Liverpool, and then I've got a question about Thiago that I'd like your opinion on. But before I get to all that, I just want to give you a little quick reminder to subscribe to the channel if you are new here, give the video a like if you've enjoyed it, and put a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on everything that I'm about to cover. First and foremost, let's do Jude Bellingham first. Um, Fabrizio Romano put out a tweet earlier on today about 20 past 2 saying Real Madrid hope to finalise the Bellingham deal already this month as they did with the Tushimane in order to avoid any late U-turn. That bit, come back to that. Real feel agreement on personal terms is almost reached as, and he cites the marker newspaper called the sporting director of Madrid had multiple meetings with the players camp. Now, it doesn't take a wizard to come up with this. Um, Fabrizio Romano for me is becoming a bit of a tapping merchant where he doesn't seem to be breaking much news of his own lately and he seems to be just only mentioning stuff when it's done deal basically so the fact he's mentioning this makes me does make me feel like it's pretty much done um, but at the same time he's also left in that little bit there which I'm coming back to now which is a bit of a get out for him where he's basically put, in order to avoid any late U-turn. So for me, that means that if this deal is not done within the next month, that he's left himself a little bit of leeway there, where he can say, well, they couldn't get it done in time, another club's come in and swooped and done the deal, yeah? Now, I'm not saying that other club can be Liverpool. The figures that are being spouted about with this Madrid deal, I do not think Liverpool are going to do. I've seen it said that it's about 100 million, 110 million up front, with another 20 million on add-ons. So you're talking about 120, 130 million for him. And I just can't see Liverpool doing that. Um, I do feel like Bellingham probably picked Madrid as a fallback for not coming to Liverpool. But it's just because if we are to believe the meeting took place between Bellingham and the Liverpool representatives in Liverpool not long ago, I wouldn't have thought that they would have travelled all that way to tell Liverpool no. And then after that, we get the newspapers coming out saying Liverpool have pulled out of a deal for Bellingham. Which makes me think now, actually, maybe that could have happened and that's why the um, Liverpool papers came out to save face, to basically say, no, he, we're not going in for him anymore because he's basically chosen someone else. And maybe it was an act of respect that they came that way to do it face-to-face -face rather than over the phone. There's many ways you could think about what's happened here, guys, but the fact that I'm going to say this, tapping merchant Fabrizio Romano is saying this. I would say that this deal is probably, he probably has got a lot of word from this to say it's pretty much going to happen. So I'd be surprised if it went anywhere else in all fairness. But, I'm, you know, my opinion can change tomorrow, it could change next week, whatever. But as it stands, I probably think Bellingham's going to Madrid by the looks of it, guys. Um, moving on, let's go and talk now about James Milner. So... This broke today as well that Brighton have moved for James Milner as a free agent. It's understood to be all but done as they work to tie up their transfer business early. It says here that you know Milner's obviously out of contract to Anfield this summer and he's received interest from Burnley as well. But he's been blown away by Roberto Di Zerbi's tactical, tactical innovation which has seen both Pep and Jurgen Klopp praise Brighton's football. And scroll down a little bit further. Nothing is finalised yet, with Brighton typically carrying out their transfer business quietly, efficiently and respectfully. They still have not officially commented on the record signing of Pau Jao Pedro. Um, and then Milner has heard testimonies of how great De Zerbi is with the elder statesmen within the squad, viewing them more than just players, but teachers even to coaching staff. Um, and the 37-year-old sees the switch as an opportunity to further challenge himself by adjusting to the fresh demands, helping Brighton cons Brighton's conveyor belt of talent to apply themselves in the most professional way. Now, that to me, guys, says that Milner's not being offered that at Liverpool, and that's why he's leaving. And he's not been offered the chance to join the coaching staff. He's not been offered the chance to do any sort of the thing that Brighton are willing to give him. Um... I'd be sad to see him go. Like I kind of feel like we should keep Milner around, um, if not just for the coaching staff thing, but also for the the homegrown quota guys. Like I've done a bit of research before I done this video. So at the moment, homegrown wise, we've got Kelleher, Trent, Gomez, 
Phillips, Ox, Milner, Jones and Henderson, right? We have got other players, Elliot and Carvalho. Um, they're under the age of 21, so wouldn't at this moment have to be registered. Cavallio turns 21 in August this year, so if he was kept around, I think he would then class as one of the homegrown players. And then Stefan Bajtecic is only 18, so again, he would not need to be registered. However, you need seven homegrown players in your squad, yeah? So if we're losing Ox and now Milner, that's two, yeah? So if then Carvalho comes in, that's six. But then there's Nat Phillips could also go, so we're back down to five. If Kelleher goes, we're down to four. So then we need to look at homegrown players to bring in. So I don't know, guys, like... If we're struggling to find English midfielders or an English defender or an English, well, not, you know, that like UK-based um, goalkeeper, backup or whatever, it makes no sense to me whatsoever to let Milner go, even if it's just to fit that quarter. Um, it's quite worrying when you break it down, like, isn't it? if we lose all them players, we only have like four left and then we're going to have to bring in another three or four or whatever to fit that quarter. Like, who are you going to bring in? We're only being linked with like, Mount, Gallagher, who else is there that we're being linked with that's like homegrown, that's like a proper strong link? Mason Mount, I've said that, Mason Mount, Connor Gallagher, Declan Rice, Jude Bellingham, like, you know, I'd... it's worrying times, guys, you got to think as well, take this into consideration when you're looking at who we're being linked with and who's leaving the club. Um, but yeah, I'd be sad to see Milner go, if that's the case, I would have liked to give him another another one-year deal on lower terms again with the option of going into the coaching staff which seems by this article on Sky Sports he's going to get at Brighton sticking with Brighton for this next one again I just spoke about this Liverpool players that we've been linked with um, we've got another tweet here from Fabrizio Romano basically stating that Liverpool are confident that they, are, they can sign Alexis McAllister closing a deal with the Brighton won't be an issue and then he followed that up with, Alexis McAllister is going to leave Brighton this summer 100%. Liverpool feel they are making progress in negotiations and presenting the project to the player. Liverpool are going to push in the next few weeks for McAllister. Now, I would love for this player to come to Liverpool. I would kind of hope and love that he is not the main midfielder that we sign as well. Um, he's a World Cup winner, as we already know. He can play in multiple positions, which I've covered in previous videos before. Attacking, centre, defensive. You know, he could, he's currently playing in a midfield pivot too with Caicedo at Brighton. So we could see him line up in the Trent position now, you know, or he could take up either the Henderson or the Jones position at the moment. You know, he could do any one of them. He seems to have a lot of energy as well and a lot of back to, a lot of um, being able to be a box to box midfielder. So he ticks all the boxes. He's a very Jurgen Klopp midfielder, a very versatile player. So I do believe these links are, are legit. There's a lot of rumours that McAllister's agents, family or whatever, were in the Liverpool area not so long ago. Um, but that he could also have been in that vicinity. Could be meeting City, could be meeting United, whoever. Um, but the fact that this has now come out shows that there's something going on there. Uh, so yeah, with um, McAllister, the, the summit definitely going on there as well. I think Paul Joyce mentioned him in his uh, latest article, um, Alexis McAllister. So as much as Paul Joyce has kind of gone down in my estimations a little bit in regards to Liverpool news, just because of, I think he's just fed a lot of stuff by certain people at the club that will have agendas and stuff. Um, I'd put some validity behind it that McAllister is a Liverpool target. So lastly, the last thing I want to talk about today was Thiago. Now, what do we do with him? So yesterday it was rumoured and then officially confirmed that Thiago will miss the rest of the season. He suffered another injury. And I think before even this injury, he'd already missed 15 games this season in all competitions. Right? Now, to just give you some feedback on how I stand with Thiago is I've loved Thiago ever since he was at Barcelona I remember following him when he was there I this is gonna make it like I remember one at FIFA games when he first broke through at Barcelona I used to always loan him and then buy him to come to Liverpool 
Um, I followed him when he went to Bayern Munich. When we signed him, he was like the first player in a long time that I've had put on the back of my shirt. He's I've loved watching Thiago play football ever since he broke through. I think he's a genius, I really do. However, we've got to look at it this way as well, guys. He's on about 200 grand a week. He's not reliable to stay fit, let's be honest with ourselves. He's... When he plays, he's unbelievable. Like, he really is unbelievable. But where would he fit into this new system? I can't see him being the Fabinho, the destroyer. I could see him taking the place of Thiago, uh, not Thiago, of Trent, sorry. <laughs> and, you know, when we have to rotate Trent in and out of the team. Um, I could see him potentially, like, as one of the two eights or the two tens, however way you want to look at it, you know, where Jones and Henderson have been playing. But is he reliable enough to stay fit? I don't know. It's his, he's in the last year of his contract as well, guys, so... It's a tough one because I don't think we'd get the money back from him that we paid for him. I don't think we'd get the 20 odd million back that we paid for him. But I do think we run the risk of losing him again for nothing and it'd just add to an, the list of midfielders that Liverpool have been signing and losing for nothing. Cater, Wijnaldum, the Ox, Milner, do you know. It's a tough one guys. So for me, if Thiago does not sign an extension, say by July, on lowered terms, and he's more of a rotational part of the team, if we stick with this formation, I would look to getting him moved on. I've seen stuff the other day that he'd been linked with a return to Barcelona. Um, I don't know what in the range of a fee we'd be looking at in getting back for him, but... I don't know guys, like, it's a tough one for me, like I say, he's a very good player when he's playing but he just doesn't play regular enough for me so I'm going to open it up to you, let me know down below what would you do with Thiago this summer, do you offer him a new deal on reduced terms or do you sell, let me know down below guys and then that's it for the video guys, um, I hope obviously Liverpool win tonight against Fulham, We've got to keep the pressure up on the top four. Uh, I'm not going to give you any score predictions or anything like that, just because I don't want to jinx us, but I'm very much looking forward to the game tonight. So yeah guys, um, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you've also enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with everything else I've got going on. And drop me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on everything that I've covered today. And I'll catch you in the next one.